Okay, we're going to do question 1.2 and this is hopefully quite a simple uh, question which reinforces uh, the main result of lecture 1 which is uh, in a nutshell that the work done uh, is equal to the change in kinetic energy um, and this actually this nasty expression here which is the integral of the resultant force over position actually in most cases uh, as is the case in this question is much simpler and essentially all you end up doing is multiplying the resultant force by the distance over which that resultant force acts but I'm going to treat it generally so that you get the idea um, so simple problem you've got a helicopter on the ground there's my helicopter and it um, flies a distance upwards of 10 meters and I'm just going to define the position on the ground as state 1 and the position when it's 10 meters high as state 2 sometimes I refer to them as positions state is just a bit more general so don't be confused by that um, okay so the essentially we want to work out what the work done is between position 1 and position 2 because that will equal the change in kinetic energy and I will use the shorthand that T2 minus so T is kinetic energy so T2 minus T1 is the change in kinetic energy um, and if I write expressions for kinetic energy then we have half M v2 squared minus half m v1 squared uh, because it's taking off um, the helicopter the initial speed v1 so the position the speed when it's on the ground is zero so that's zero so we are left with simply half m v2 squared so if we can work out what the resultant uh, sorry the work done on the resultant forces is then we can work out what the speed is because we know the mass um, so let's write down our general expression from our lecture of the work done and we'll, we'll sh show that that's um, that we don't need anything quite that complicated so we're going to integrate over a dist distance or a position and I'll define y as being 0 at 1 and 10 at 2 so we're going integrating from 0 to 10 the resultant force uh, with respect to y so that's that's I've interpreted essentially that expression there um, up here so what is the resultant force well the resultant force is well there are two two forces one is a thrust force which is given in the question of 107 kilonewtons there so that's let's just call that ft it's positive because it's going upwards um, and then you've got a negative force which is the force of gravity so that's just mg and what you see straight away is that this is not dependent on the position so it's a constant force both terms are so it means that they come outside of the integral so ft minus mg so you're just integrating 1 between 0 and 10 and if you integrate 1 then all you get is ft minus mg which is um, basically um, y2 minus y1 which in this case is simply ft minus mg times by 10 so that was a very long winded way of, of basically recognising the fact that the forces are constant with respect to the position and therefore the resultant, sorry the work done is just the resultant force times the distance so it's the resultant force times 10 metres which is uh, written there so let's put some uh, values in there so the the thrust is 107 kilonewtons uh, the 
mass is 9,300 kilograms times 9.81 and we're going to multiply that by 10 and that will equal, let me just do some sums here, so 107 times 10 to the 3 minus 9,300 times 9.81 times 10 gives us that which is 158 kilo newton meters so it's, those are the units of work done or joules okay um, so now we have the work done we know that that is equal to the change in kinetic energy which is just the kinetic energy at position 2 so we can now write that half m v2 squared is equal to 158 times 10 to the 3 and with a bit of rearrangement we can write and I'm going to try and do this in my head that 158 let's just move the light a bit 158 e to the 3 times 2 uh, all divided by the mass which is 9,300 gives you that and if I take the square root of that answer that gives me 5.83 meters per second and that is the answer to the question so I've said it a couple of times this would have been much easier if I'd not bothered writing out this general expression but um, I, I wanted to show you the sort of the full story okay